welcome to the Prophecy Club. I'm about to surprise you. If you were to ask me, what are the three biggest changes in my life? Business, personal, spiritual, everything included. The three biggest changes in my life. What changed your life for the better the most? I would say without question, and by the way, this is going to surprise you, <laughs> the first one or the second one or the third one is not receiving Jesus. Uh, because I received Jesus at the age of nine, and there wasn't a big change in my life. But number one, without any question, would be the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it was a major getting hit with a truck, a spiritual truck. It really, really changed my life. Number two was being called into full-time ministry to start the Prophecy Club. A lot of things changed there. But, and this is probably going to surprise you, number three without any question, would be building my prayer closet. Now, here's how it all got started. We're about to talk about that. I guess it was mm, over about 12 years ago, just God began to lay on my heart that I needed to get to praying. He didn't say anything about a prayer closet, but I just need to pray. And I, <laughs> I did what any good Christian <laughs> does. I ignored it. <laughs> I'm just being honest, okay? I just ignored it for a day or two, but it wasn't going away. It was something kind of stuck in my heart. I need to get to praying. So finally, I thought, okay. Uh, and I let Leslie go to sleep that night, uh, scratched her to sleep as I normally do every night. And then I went in the other room and I got on my knees. And oh boy, did I find a whole nother world. Well, so much so, the next thing was I thought, all right, I'm not going to let anybody know that I'm doing this. And of course, later, Leslie later told me that, oh yeah, I knew you were getting up. <laughs> I knew what you were doing. <laughs> Can't get by with anything with the prophet. But I wasn't talking about, I wasn't going to tell anybody about this. This is just my own little secret. And then before long, all of a sudden I found myself at a Detroit prophecy conference and I prophecy club, and I was telling everybody about it. And I thought, wow, well, what, what am I doing up here? I'm, I'm t telling my deepest, darkest secrets between me and God, you know? And to my surprise, when I got done, I mean, I got a rousing applause. I'm not going to say a standing ovation, but it was pretty close. And then several people came up and said, man, you got to tur turn this into a DVD. You got to make a DVD about this. You got to tell everybody about this. I'm like, no, no, this is my personal private prayers. This, no. Well, long story short, <laughs> I did turn it into a DVD. Then I got another surprise. Now, in those days, we we're having meetings in a lot of different cities and when I would go out to the different cities, I was used to, I mean, I've made, what, 33 different DVDs now. And so once in a while, I would get a compliment on somebody, hey, I really enjoyed that DVD. But all of a sudden, compliments from every place began coming. Man, I love that DVD. Man, that DVD changed my life. That was a great DVD. Well, then at the end of the year, I looked and that DVD had outsold all other DVDs except one. That's Dimitri Dudeman's DVD. And it has still to this day remained constantly one of the best-selling DVDs that we have. And it's called Building Your Prayer Closet, Protection in a Time of Trouble. Now, I'm about to play the audio of that DVD for you. However, we've also put together this whole package of three DVDs into an offer that I think it is so good, even if you have, man, oh, let me, let me also that. If you already have one of these DVDs, you can still call in and substitute a DVD. So you can still get three DVDs for this great offer. But here's what we're doing. You can get Bree Keaton's brand new DVD that she just made here, what, three or four days ago, America's War in the Heavens, you can also get the DVD from Bree just before that called Explosive Prayer Strategies. And then the DVD that I'm talking about today called Prayer Closet. You can get all three of those valued at $90 for an unbelievably low gift offer of just $35. Now, it helps us, but it also helps you. Now, here's the thing I think you're going to get out of the prayer closet the most. 
it is going to send you into another spiritual world. That's big to say. I mean, frankly, okay, let's just be honest about it. That's big, okay? Stan, you're telling thousands of people that you're going to change their spiritual life. That's pretty tough to do. That's what people say. That's what people say about this DVD. They say that this sends them into their knees to build a prayer closet, a relationship with Father God and Son Jesus like they have never, ever had in their life. Now, still to this day, every night, it is my pleasure to fall to my knees and worship my God. And if you ask me, that is the center of the strength of, the center of the place that I draw strength to do everything else that I do in life. When things aren't going well, I'm on my knees. When things are going well, I'm on my knees. <laughs> when things aren't going, I'm on my knees. When I need an answer, I'm on my knees. When I got an answer, I'm on my knees. I mean, it's the center. And I'm going to say this. Dimitri Dudeman is the same way. Michael Bolday is the same way. I'm going to say that there's probably not a great man or woman of God that does not have an ongoing, daily, on their knees time with the Lord. Not if they're doing anything big for God. So if you want to be doing more for God, I'm going to say that the Prayer Closet DVD is the single most important thing you can do to get it. What about reading the Bible? Hey, don't get me wrong. Reading the Bible is great. What about memorizing scripture? Well, of course, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that's great too. What about going full time in ministry? I'm going to say, man, <laughs> you want to get a prayer closet, especially if you're going full time in the ministry. I'm saying that in my life, it is the biggest change of my life outside of being called full-time the ministry and baptizing the, baptizing the Holy Spirit. It's, I, I cannot stress to you how important it is. Now, for me to talk about it on the radio, yeah, I, I could try. For me to be able to talk to you in person, I could try. But to really explain it, I mean, it takes two and a half hours, like on this DVD. And there was an anointing on this DVD. I don't think that I could record this DVD now and make the DVD as good now as I did then. And the reason is, is because I could just come through starting it, building it with all of the frustrations, all of the things, all of the things that I've learned about how to develop that relationship with God. Today, I've had it for, I don't know, 12, 14 years, and I've forgotten a whole lot of that stuff. But this DVD, this DVD, in my opinion, is special. And that's what everybody says. Even to this day, it is still one of our top selling DVDs, building your prayer closet protection in the time of trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and play the audio of this DVD prayer closet. That's what we call it for short. But I'm also going to throw in explosive prayer strategies and America's war in the heavens. You're going to get all three of them for a gift of thirty five dollars. Probably when you call in, you'll probably toss in an extra gift above that just because you want to help us to reach more people. All right, let's go on over and listen to me, Stan Johnson, talking on building your prayer closet protection in a time of trouble. Uh, this is not a talk to kill the rapture. However, this DVD is. It's called The Truth About the Rapture, and I cover 370 scriptures. And believe me, covering 370 scriptures in two and a half hours is picking them up and laying them down. I mean, I'm moving and motivating. But I'll tell you what, it has become one of the most popular DVDs at the Prophecy Club. And I understand that there was a pastor of about 1,500 people in his church that recently shut down Sunday morning service and played this DVD for the whole congregation because it changed his thinking and he wanted to change their thinking as well. The truth about the rapture, simply put, is this. There is no pre-trib rapture. There is no mid-trib rapture. There is no pre-wrath rapture. The rapture is not going to save anyone. Jesus said very clearly, Gather ye first the tares, that's the sinners, bind them into bundles and cast them into the fire. Then gather my wheat, that's the Christians, then gather my wheat into the barn, that's the new Jerusalem that come down, comes down out of heaven. In other words, when we are raptured, brothers and sisters, all of the sinners 
are gone. The rapture is not going to protect us from anything. As a matter of fact, those people that say that Jesus could return any moment simply do not know their Bible. I can tell you this. The Bible says, woe to those that desire the day of the Lord. It is not a day of light. It is a day of darkness and gloominess. You see, the Bible says in Revelation that the sun will go out. Isaiah 30 says that it'll get seven times hotter, kind of like you turn on a light switch and it Kind of like a flash, uh, like your, your flash cube on your cameras. It gets really bright, seven times hotter, and then it goes out. And so until the sun is totally out, don't look for Jesus. He's not coming back. And I believe the rapture is going to send a lot of people to hell. We recently were in Modesto at a crusade. One of the brothers stood up there and he pointed out something that I'm going to enthusiastically confirm and check out to see if he's correct. But he said before almost every Holocaust, and by the way, there's been more than just what happened to the Jews through history. Almost every Holocaust, the sleeping pill that put the church to sleep was the pre-trib rapture. You see, the church in Germany was told, you don't have to worry about it because for any trouble, you're going to get raptured out. And of course, uh, we had Barry Smith come in, good brother in the Lord. Uh, He's gone to be with the Lord now, but he was a prophecy student for many years and We had him in at the Prophecy Club, and he told me this story. He said that before World War II, the churches were filled in France and Germany and England. He said, but when there was no rapture, people walked away from the church. He says, and they haven't returned. You see, brothers and sisters, there is no rapture. And the reason pastors teach the rapture is because of their soft heart, which is good, and they want to reassure people, and that's good. (laughs) but they need something to replace it with. And I'm here to give you some good news tonight. This whole talk is going to be about good news because I'm going to tell you that our God is good. Our God is holy. Now, let me explain holy. That means through all generations, all time past, all time future, through all time dimensions, he's never made a mistake. He's holy. He's perfect. He's good. And he knows how to deliver the sinners into judgment And he knows how to deliver the righteous out of the hands of sinners. And that's the reason the Bible says two will be grinding in the mill. One will be taken, the other left. And the one that's taken, brothers and sisters, is the tear. That's the Bible. That's true. Go check it out. Truth About the Rapture DVD. All right, now, before we get into the prayer closet and how God is going to protect us and all of the reasons why I know I'm accurate in what I'm saying here, first of all, we have to understand what the problem is. What is the problem? Where our nation has fallen away from God. And I'm going to briefly give you an overview of Dimitri Dudeman's testimony because I believe that he, similar to John the Revelator, was sent to America to bring them a warning from God. So his testimony is very important. Now, the first question is, should we listen to Dimitri Dudeman? Well, I want to compare John the Revelator to Dimitri Dudeman, the prophet. By the way, he never called himself a prophet. Matter of fact, he said he was not a prophet. But in fact, his works and his fruits do point to the fact he was a prophet. John the Revelator. Jesus visited him. He had numerous beatings. He was tortured, boiled in oil, banned to the island of Patmos, where he was given the revelation warning. Dimitri Dudeman had numerous angel visits, numerous beatings, torture, prison, jail, electric chair twice, banned to America, given the Babylon or American warning, telling America that she's going to be judged and that she is, in fact, Revelation 18. Now, now let's talk briefly about what is that warning. Dimitri Dudeman was a Romanian pastor. He smuggled Bibles and remained into Romania and Russia for some 30 years. Finally, he was arrested and put on the electric chair twice. They came to him and they said, Dimitri, come, we want to show you something. And he said, I looked and he saw a very unusual chair. And they said, Dimitri, we brought this chair all the way from Germany just for you. He said, you tell us where the Bibles are now. Are you going to die in that chair? He said, even if I die, I have nothing to tell you. He said, so they put me on the chair. And they strapped something over my chest. They put something in my ears. They put a bowl on my head, put something under my feet. And he said, now, tell us where the Bibles are. You're going to die in that chair. And they turned it on. I felt a powerful shock going all through my body. And he said, when I thought I was going to die, I hollered out and said, God, don't let me down. He said, about that time, the whole room lit up with white light. He said, out of the light, there was the same voice. 
the same voice for years that would have been helping him to get Bibles through. And said, Dimitri, don't worry. He said, you're not going to die. He said, you're going to America to give them a warning from God. He said, plead the blood of Jesus. So I started saying, Sinjalulu Asus, Sinjalulu Asus, Sinjalulu Asus, which was Romanian for the blood of Jesus. He said, I woke up on the ground. They were pouring water on me and slapping me around and said, now we have it. Listen. And they turned on the piece of electronic equipment and there was his voice. Sinjalulu Asus, Sinjalulu Asus, because the blood of Jesus was victorious. Brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus protected him from the electricity in the electric chair. Now, I'm going to skip a lot of the story, and I'm skipping a whole lot of this, because the next day they brought his wife in and they beat on her some. And then later on that day, they put him back on the electric chair twice, turned the electricity up again, same way, twice, could not kill him. So I think that when someone is put on the electric chair, the angel Gabriel comes to them and tells them they're not going to die to plead the blood of Jesus, they're going to America to give them a warning from God. I think that's somebody that's earned the right for Christians around the globe to listen to what God is saying through them. I think they've earned the right. In my opinion, that falls on the same belief level as John the Revelator. Well, what was said? He was exiled, or actually he was uh, taken home. Three months later, the angel came to him and he said, uh, in the middle of the night, he said, Dimitri, get up, get up, run outside. He said, I ran outside. He said, there was the angel. He said, do you hurt anymore? He said, no. He said, can you walk now? He said, yeah. He says, okay. He says, get busy. He said, you have four more years to carry Bibles. He said, they will follow you step by step, but I will be ahead of you. I will blind their eyes. When they see they can't catch you, They're going to kick you out of your country. He said, you're going to America to give them a warning from God. He said, so that you know that I'm truly the angel of God, I'm going to tell you the year, the month, the day, and the hour you're going to be exiled to America. He said, he told him July 22nd, 1984, at exactly 10 o'clock in the morning. He said, for four years, I carried Bibles without fear. He said, I took out the passenger seat. I took out the back seat. I filled my whole whole car with Bibles. He said there were so many Bibles in the car I could barely turn the steering wheel. I would pull up to the checkpoint. Dimitri, what do you have in your car? Bibles. And they would open up the trunk and they're throwing Bibles around. What are you doing with all these books? Where are the Bibles? We know you have Bibles. He said, those are Bibles. Ah, go on. Get out of here. Get out. Quit making fun of us. They couldn't see him. They would come to his house with all kinds of electronic equipment to see through the walls. But they couldn't see him. They'd be walking on Bibles. His whole house is a Bible warehouse, but they couldn't see him. Now, I tell you the story because, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know, our God can protect us from the beast. Our God can protect us from anything the new world order, the Antichrist, is going to throw at us. We don't have to be worried about the Antichrist or the new world order. We have to fear God. And see, America has lost the fear of God. They've lost the fear of church leadership. They've lost the fear of the anointings, the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. They've lost the respect for the church. But brothers and sisters, there's a time of trouble that is coming up to remove the spots and wrinkles from those people so that they might be clean, so that they might go to heaven. So finally, he was exiled. He said that morning, he said, we'd given away everything. He said, we packed up all of our clothes. We're sitting in the living room, all of our suitcases ready to go. They came knocking on the door. Demetri, you have to come with us. He said, okay, fine, let's go. He said, how did you know? How are you all ready? He said, God told us. So they went to the airport. He said, just as the airplane was backing up from the dock, he said, the the stewardess picked up the microphone, welcome to Pan Am flight, so-and-so and and such and such, exactly as the angel had said. July 22nd, 10 o'clock, 1984. That's how we know we have to listen to this message. So he came to America. I'm skipping a lot of the story again. The angel came to him again. He said, Dimitri, he said, get beside me. He said, I don't know what it was, brothers. He said, it looked like a big pillow on fire. He said, but a moment of time, he took and showed me all of California and Las Vegas and New York and Florida. He said, you see what I've shown you? He said, this is Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, their sins have reached the Holy One. And he said, God has decided to punish it with fire. He said, the fall of America will start with an internal revolution started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two other countries will attack and defeat America. 
Then God will raise up China and Japan and many other nations. They'll go against the Russians. They'll defeat the Russians. They'll back the Russians to the gates of Paris where they'll sign a peace treaty. But they make the Russians their leader. Then, under the leadership of the Russians, it's not that they want to, but God makes them. I believe that this is the hook in the jaw of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Then all of the world goes down to attack Israel. Israel can't count on the help of the Jews in America, so she cries for Messiah. Messiah returns on the clouds and defeats the armies of the earth. He said, now, so that you know that I truly am the angel of God. He said, tomorrow morning at 1030, someone will come and give you some money for rent. At 1130, someone will, pay, someone will bring you a bed. And at 1230, someone will give you a car and a bucket of honey. He said, brothers, it happened exactly as the angel had said. At 10.30, somebody knocked on my door, and he says, uh, God told me you're from another country, and you don't, you don't have any money, and handed him a check for $500, paid his rent. And then at 11.30, someone knocked on the door, God told me to bring you a bed. Can you help me unload it? And at 12.30, someone knocked on the door, handed him the keys to a car. He walked out and opened the door, sitting on the seat was a bucket of honey. Now, I think that story has earned the right for every Christian, every pastor, every church leader in America to set up and pay attention and listen to what God says. I mean, what else would God have to say to get the attention of the church and the church leadership? I think that qualifies. Now, I want to go back and read part of that again because it's going to make a point that is very important. He says, the Russians are bombed by the nuclear missiles in America. America will burn. I said, what will you do with the church? He said, the church has left me. He said, how? Don't you have any people here? He said, people in America honor people. He said, the honor should be given to God. They give to other people. He said, Americans think high of themselves. They say, I serve God, but they don't. In the church, there's divorces, adultery, fornication, sodomy, abortion, and all kinds of sin. Jesus doesn't live in sin. He lives in holiness. I brought you here so you could cry out loud. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Tell them to stop sinning because God never stops forgiving. Tell them to repent. He will forgive them. Now, here's what I want to point out. Tell them to start preparing themselves now so I can save them in the day of trouble. Now, let me, let me talk about that a minute. When I was with Dimitri Dudeman in March of 1988 and I was driving him around, uh, the two weeks he stayed in my home, we went to like about seven different churches, seven different Christian organizations, uh, radio stations, a TV station. And as we were driving around, he said many things. And one of the things he told me was a joke. He said, two men ran across a bridge. He said, the first man, he didn't stop to pray. He just ran across the bridge. The second man got down on his knees, folded his hands and got in a real serious prayer. said, Lord, protect me as I go across this bridge. Halfway across, the bridge collapsed and he died. How is that right in the eyes of God? And I said, I don't know. He said, the first man, he prays all the time. He says, the second man, he only prays when he's in trouble. You see, brothers and sisters, that's your average American. They'll turn to God when they have to. And until then, they're going to live in the world and they're going to continue to build their kingdom. Just like the bumper sticker says, the one that dies with the most toys wins. Well, I'm going to tell you what, brothers and sisters, is not accurate. Tell them to start preparing themselves so I can save them in the day of trouble. In other words, we cannot wait until the day of trouble to ask God to protect us because I'm going to show you that he is not going to hear. He is not going. If you want protection, brothers and sisters, you have to start preparing yourselves now. Let's continue. The angel went on to say, tell them that they must stop sinning. And repent if they want God's protection. I said, how will you save the church if America will burn? He said, tell them exactly as I tell you. As he saved the three young men from the oven of fire, in other words, Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel from the mouth of the lion, that is how I'll save them. But tell them to stop sinning and repent. Now, here's a question. Where <laughs> were Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego raptured? No. The rapture didn't protect Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or Daniel, and it's not going to protect you either. However, I'll tell you the same thing that protected Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the same thing that will protect you in the day of trouble too. Now, Dimitri Dudeman had a series of dreams and visions and angel visits. In my opinion, he was probably the greatest man of God 
of the 20th century. And I believe, again, he's someone we need to listen to. And I want to read part of them. Now, I realize that part of this is going to be a little laborious, and I realize some of it might be um, a little scary. But it's like this. If I don't scare you enough and wake you up enough to help you to understand the seriousness of what is coming, then you might not prepare. As one of these is going to say, people tend to, just like the parable Jesus said about the the sower, some seeds fell among thorns, some fell upon dry ground and just withered up. So I'm going to try to motivate you here in the next few minutes to understand the seriousness of what is coming upon the world and that you're not getting away from it. And it is going to happen in your lifetime, in my opinion. I believe God has spoken to me. It's going to happen in our lifetime, defined as the next 15 or 20 years, maybe even sooner. Now, Virginia Boldea, which is Dimitri Dudeman's daughter, said that the mind of man cannot conceive of how bad it's going to get in America before Jesus returns. Now, this is one of the dreams or visions from Dimitri. It's called a flicker of light. I'm only just choosing just a a paragraph from each one of these. Then the voice said to me, do not be quiet. Tell the people that time is very short and the troubles will come upon the earth. Now, let me just make a comment. You're going to hear that time is very short, but then at the same time, I just said maybe 15 or 20 years. Okay, I'm going to interrupt right there, but I'm going to encourage you to get these three DVDs in the prayer gift offer. That's what we're calling it, the prayer gift offer. You're going to get Bree Keaton's brand new DVD just made two or three days ago, and it's called America's War in the Heavens, which, by the way, I have to say, Bree did an awesome job, and frankly, what the bullet points are, And what she said she was going to say and what she actually said, no comparison. What she actually said was so much better than what she told us she was going to say. Actually, she said, well, I thought it would take five hours to get through this much information, but she was able to get it all in two and a half hours. Now, that's jam-packed, but she got it all in there. And I'm going to say this is really good, and it's not just about prayer. You will really like America's War in the Heavens. Also, her DVD before that, Explosive Prayer Strategies, Power Prayers That Work. This is about prayers. But this lady, having gone to the Congo and rescued 70,000 pygmies and been shot at and hunted and had to hide and run and things like that, has certainly earned the right to talk about prayers that really work under pressure. Then the DVD we've been listening to, Prayer Closet, Protection in the Day of Trouble. And I explained the secret place of God's protection, why God protected Daniel, David, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Demetri Dudeman, and how I was led to build a prayer closet, how I built it, and what I discovered there. More importantly, I'll give you some steps to build your prayer closet. All three DVDs valued at $90, all available at prophecyclub.com for a gift of just $35. Now, of course, we recommend you give an extra gift above that, and you probably will. 785-266-1112. It's called Prayer Gift Offer. Prayer Gift Offer. Prophecyclub.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for those gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. As you know, Redwood Gold is now sponsoring the Prophecy Club. That means that they help us to continue to be able to come to you. So, of course, we want to help them. In an effort to get you to introduce yourself to them, they're offering a one gram silver bar free and postage paid just for giving them a call. They just want to get to know you. Now, it's a limited time offer. It works like this. You call Redwood Gold, tell them you listen to the Prophecy Club, chat with them a moment. They send you a one gram silver bar free and postage paid. Redwood Gold, 844-800-6677. Pretty good deal, huh? Just for an introduction. Redwood Gold, 844-800-6677. No obligation. Tell them you listen to the Prophecy Club. Redwood Gold, 844-800-6677. You got nothing to lose. Call today.